question is, of course, if District Attorney Fannie Willis will be able to stay on this case uh, due to her relationship with the prosecutor she put on the case. Right. And the question they're looking at is whether or not she financially benefited in any way, if there were any types of rules or regulations or laws broken here that would no. cause for a change to be made in this case. Well, and, and as Dave Ehrenberg uh, brought up a minute ago, uh, Joyce Vance, if in fact uh, they did lie under oath about when their relationship began, uh, then they, they both will likely be removed from the case, right? Well, they certainly have a duty of candor to the court, and so it would um, be extraordinary to have two prosecutors lying to the judge, and he'd be entitled to take the action that he saw fit. Of course, one intermediate step here might be recusing Nathan Wade, the prosecutor that Fonnie Willis mm -hmm. brought in from private practice and who she uh, apparently has a relationship having Wade step aside from the case and permitting Willis to continue. The, the people of Georgia, the people of Fulton County are entitled to have someone that they elected to office conduct their affairs. And so removing an elected prosecutor from a case would be a, a really extreme step in many ways. I, I'm wondering, Danny, your thoughts on this. If, in fact, we find out that they were lying under oath about when the relationship began, uh, do, you, do you think the judge is, is going to remove her from the trial? Oh, I think that's the least that would happen. Now, think about it. The timeline is so critical because if Fannie Willis appointed Wade uh, before when they were having a relationship, then the defense really has a strong argument there that this was something that was uh, a plum given to somebody that she was having a mm -hmm. personal relationship with. Uh, and then furthermore, if they've deceived the court about when that relationship began, I think that's a huge deal to represent to the court Again, it's the cover-up that makes it worse than the underlying conduct. Because let's take a step back. Uh, Dave Ehrenberg will tell you that in every state courthouse, particularly criminal courthouse in America, people are dating. Judges are dating cops. Cops are dating public defenders. Some of it's in the open. A lot of it's secret. That's not what this motion is about. This isn't a motion to dismiss because the prosecutors may have had a personal relationship. It's a motion to dismiss because the theory is that if payments were made, if she appointed the special prosecutor and was essentially getting what you could, I guess, uh, qualify as a, a kickback in terms of he got paid and then the money got paid back uh, to Fonnie Willis then you might have the appearance of impropriety. And those are the magic words here. Judge McAfee has already made reference to those magic words. In the rules of ethics and at disciplinary boards across the country, uh, those are the magic words. It's not whether they did something that was misconduct. It's instead whether it created the appearance of impropriety, because that is the standard by which attorneys are judged. That is the standard that safeguards the legal profession and causes the public uh, to keep its trust in us. So look not for whether or not there was an actual uh, relationship or whether there was actual misconduct. Judge McAfee is going to be looking for whether there's the appearance of impropriety. And if they deceive the court about that relationship, that will bolster the argument that there's the appearance of impropriety. Let me give you an example. There's been, uh, the state has countered so far that, hey, even if there was a relationship, when they went on, on trips, everybody paid Dutch. They looked at the bill, they pulled out their money, and no matter where they were, traveling, abroad, it doesn't matter, they always paid for their own way. That seems like a little bit of a stretch. To me, maybe it'll end up being completely true that every time they're at a Chili's, they look at the receipt, they divvy it up right down the middle, and nobody's paying for it. The state uh, funds are not going from uh, the state to Wade and then back to Fonnie Wills. Maybe that's the case. But if they've made that assertion, and it, that also ends up not being true, that too will be a problem for Fonnie Willis and Wade. Uh, I think that if there is a strong appearance of impropriety here, there's a very strong likelihood that both Wade and Fonnie Willis will be disqualified. And it's Willis that really matters. If Wade gets disqualified, someone else can step in. In fact, that's been the subject of a lot of this litigation. In fact, in a, a, a very a twilight zone moment, the defense essentially argued that Wade didn't have sufficient experience and you have this moment where the defense is essentially arguing, hey, the state should have gotten a better qualified prosecutor to prosecute us. And, of course, this was pointed out in the papers. Uh, it's, that's a non-issue. Wade's lack of qualifications or alleged lack of qualifications, as Judge McAfee put it, if you've got a heartbeat and a bar card, 
you're qualified to be a prosecutor as far as this motion goes. But again, go back to the appearance of impropriety. It's what Judge McAfee is going to be looking for. It is the standard against which this conduct is judged.